Okay, I'm going to go over some basics of uh, my expectations for painting. Um, remember that when your image is done, whether you've left it uh, you know, in, in Sharpie marker as we have done here, if you had any original carbon underneath the uh, image, that's like pencil, you need to erase all that out. Um, if you leave any carbon on the canvas, um, when you do colors like yellow, they might turn green and oranges may turn brown. So it's important to clean those off. So we have a couple methods of uh, working with paint that I want to show you um, that are acceptable in this classroom. Um, one of them is that if you're going to mix colors, um, you could get a little scrap of copy paper, just kind of fold it in half. And I've set up the paint to have these little popsicle sticks in them. So you can just kind of scoop a little, dab it on the paper. And then if you know you need a purple, you would go ahead and grab a little bit of blue, a little bit of red. And then you can mix on the paper if you need to. Um, and that way the paints stay clean. So for this particular project, um, each hand is going to be a base color, which will be a primary. Plus we're going to add in some black and white with one of the other hands. So I'm just going to say that this hand is going to be my red hand. So I'm going to find my largest space that's just the hand without overlap. And actually it's kind of a small space, so that's right here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up some red, and I'm going to kind of paint in the space. Now for this particular project, you're supposed to go up to the lines. Try not to cross over them. If you do, it's okay. We can fix that later. And our white paint in our boxes actually is a white out kind of paint, so we can use that to fix up things. But you notice I'm going very carefully on the edges. I can go fast when I'm filling in the middle. But as I get close to a place that has a couple lines, I'm using just the tip of the brush to do that. Now, this isn't closed off here, so I'm going to go ahead and let it transfer through. Very careful on the edges. You notice I'm kind of pressing the brush down so it drags behind the stick. When you fill in the area, it's not, you know, to worry too much about how you apply the paint. But as you get near the edges, letting the brush kind of flow along the edge is important. When you get to a corner, sometimes it's important to kind of clean off your brush in two directions so that it becomes kind of pointy. And then you can use that point to get into those corners. And that way you don't go over the line too much. So that's already filled in. So the other thing we have at our desk is a, uh, a can half full of water. Why not all the way full? Well, you're going to get your hand wet as you're trying to clean it. And also if it spills, if it's only half a can of water, it's half as much damage. So I'm going to take the brush and I'm going to pretend to paint the bottom of the can kind of vigorously. And that should be enough to kind of clean it off. I don't really need to squeeze it off or anything like that. I can give it a little tap if I want to. And then maybe I'm going to go now into the blue hand. So I can pick any of the other hands to be blue. I'm going to go ahead and pick this one. And go ahead and get some blue on my brush. Now, the brush has three parts. We've got the brush, we've got the collar, and then we've got the handle. We want to try and keep the paint off of the collar, but sometimes, obviously, it gets there. So when you wash your brushes uh, at the end, you want to make sure that the collar is clean. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and apply this in. Now I have this little line sticking around here, so because I used a thick Sharpie, I can just kind of go around that. Notice that I'm staying inside the shape. I'm not crossing any lines for this particular project because this is going to be a color wheel. And if I run out of color, which I have, I'll just dab a little bit more blue in there. You could even dab right onto the canvas if you'd like to. Uh, if you know that it's just going to be a saturated color, why not? So my next color is going to be yellow. Again, where the hands do not overlap, I could put yellow here or here. doesn't matter, but I'm going to pick one and go for it. And then black will be our other color, so that can go here, 
could go here, but I think that's the larger area, so that's where I'm going to put that. Now, when we're done, again, cleaning our brush here, painting the bottom of the can. And then I'm going to show you how do we do our final cleaning. So for final cleaning of our brushes, I've set up the sink with three buckets. The first bucket has soap in it. So you're going to paint the bottom of the bucket for about the count of ten. Then I give it a tap. You want to notice the collar of the brush if you got any paint on it. That's where you're going to clean it in the second bucket. So again, paint along the bottom of the bucket and then use your fingers under the water to clean off anything that might be on the collar of the brush. If you do that underwater, it won't get paint on your hands, it'll stay in the water. Give that a tap, and then one final rinse, and actually if you did the washing properly in the other two buckets, there will be almost no color in this one. So if you start seeing color in this third bucket, that means you really didn't take your time with the other two. So go ahead and give that 10 seconds. Give it a tap, and then we have some testing paper over here. So you go ahead and just rub your brush on the testing paper and make sure it's clean. There's no need to squeeze the brush, use a tissue on the brush or anything like that, but we are going to put it in our can of brushes, which is right here, and we want to make sure that all the brushes are pointing upward, so the hair on the brush is towards the top. If the hair on the brush is going down, water collects in the bottom of the can and we can get mold and all sorts of nastiness happening in there. It's really important that the brushes go brush end up. The brushes are actually held together with hot glue inside this metal piece. So that's the reason we always use cold water to wash a brush. If you use hot water, uh, it'll melt the glue and then the bristles start to fall out and even the collar can come off of the wooden handle. Okay, so that's what we need to do for proper brush care.